Hey, it's Joe from the Automator, and uh, here's another uh, example of what we did this week here at the Automator with AutoHotKey, we're automating things. Um, I'm going to try to make this kind of quick because I'm still working on a project, and uh, I'll talk about it a bit when we're getting into here. So let's just start from the top. I or I sorted these by folders. Again, I, I just used this tool to search in the last seven days. This time we had 46 files that we had worked on. Um, and that mainly is because we were more focused. We did a lot of stuff, but they were in fewer files. So anyway, let's see this this people data labs. I think I mentioned to you before we're using an API for pulling data. Um, and the thing is, the, it had a hundred people data labs. When you extract, you do a an email address append with information. And here, by the way, I I go ahead and show you my information. This is we pulled my Gmail address, and and it had you know it actually had a lot more, probably three four. Well, maybe more like 10 times the amount of this data is here. Um, what I did was I just came in here. We had a couple other ones also, but I didn't want to share their data, obviously. I don't mind mine, but I don't want to share other people's. And I flipped the, the file, so I transposed it, so it's just easier to read because uh, otherwise it's it was really hard going across to really understand it. And what I asked Orfan to do is I went through and said, hey, here are the fields I'd like to capture out of this big glob of JSON data. And for each person, they'd have they'd have different fields. So I had to first pull a couple of people's data to see what's available and then say, OK, here are the ones that I think I'd like to look at. So I gave him a list. He put it into Excel for me. Um, again, this is just my data, but he put everyone's in here. And I was visually looking at it, and and I finally just realized, even though this one is is interesting, the skills this is more than likely from LinkedIn, but that skills we on those that had multiple things we put in one column typed limited, so these were different listed separately. I had them concatenated together so the the file itself was not ugly. Um, also with the locations of like where I've lived, so as you can see, I've I've gotten around. Um, but from a data science perspective. It's the skills could have something in there that we can look for. Uh, what I'm trying to do is to profile people who are purchasing our courses and those quite possibly could predict on who's likely to purchase a course. And we could use that to um, when a new email comes through, drops into the newsletter, I could profile them. And then if they look high on the likelihood of, to purchase courses, I could treat them differently. Right. That's the whole point. But I said, you know what? It's just too loosey goosey. There's not any hard numbers here. Like if we had um, the actual number, and I think there's a range of the employee size, and there's something about the job title. I did see, like I had the um, guru, but it's a text string. Here, here's my job title: Auto Hotkey Guru. Right? Like that's. It's not the level. What I really would love is to say like the. Um, a management level type thing that can be good for predictive analysis. So anyway, so I said, you know what, let's not worry about this for now. But um, that was the first one. And unfortunately, I had to have Irfan do that in order for me to see the data. So thankfully, he's, you know, he's pretty fast at the stuff, but um, it takes time to decide if you want it or not. But that all these, whoops, all these files here in this folder, these are all related to that. So he, like what we normally do is try to break down things into separate files that make sense, right? And let's see our next one, ClipShare. We made a couple more updates to ClipShare. We were having problems. So ClipShare is a tool we're working on that we use together and we use it a lot. It's really helpful. So I can hit control shift C on either selected text or a file and it will copy that file sort of to the clipboard to a local file that is shared between the three of us. And if they, it, it'll send them a notification saying, hey, Joe copied a file. And they can choose if they want that text or the file or not. So it's, it's very handy. Uh, we've been having problems with it, the clipboard getting locked with applications like Excel will lock your clipboard, which is problematic, but it's it's getting closer to where we could share it. Um, the notify class, we did a really good long video on that. I forget what we updated on it, but it was nothing too major. It's really kind of stayed the same. Our media player in the hero group the other day, we I said, hey, let's, let's make it where... Um, one is if I hold down control shift, because that's what most of the hotkeys are triggered off of. If I hit hold down control shift and scroll with my mouse, it will now increase and decrease the volume, as you can see in the bottom right part of the screen. Uh, but we also, I said, hey, let me, it, let's say if I can hold down control shift and I for increase, it, if I hold it down, it'll keep doing it. Well, it actually already does that. So control shift I and control shift D, 
Now they're still a bit fast, so we're going to have to slow that down. But we did that during the hero call. Um, to my surprise, it was something that already it already did. Um, but we do need to figure out how to slow that down a bit because just it goes way too fast. So that's the media player. That one, um, it's just the automator slash media player. If you want to go grab that download, you can grab that. And this GUI, I was testing because the the big updates for OpenAI, they mentioned they pulled through April 2023. And I thought, you know, let's see if it learned, if it's handling V2 yet. Uh, uh, so you could ask it to create a V2 GUI uh, or V2 script. And, and I tried making a GUI and it got close. I had to actually save it as a file to run it to see if it would work or not because it got really close. It wasn't quite there, but I was really happy to see we definitely made some progress on it. And I'll bet you in a few months, it'll we'll be able to use it, ChatGPT, to really create some decent V2 code. So that's awesome. Um, on, was it Friday? Yeah, Friday was Auto Hockey's 20th anniversary. So we have a tool that allows me to, hey, offer up a coupon code and it writes my HTML. Um, actually, let me let me show it to you. So it will go, I use this tool a lot also. This is a website just to render and then I can make it, um, I can write stuff in Word, but in this case, we're going to have HTML. So uh, let me use quick access pop-up to launch the tool. Nope, 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 not there. Oh, uh, not there. There we go. Scripts. Now, um, it's one of these discount course HTML list. So when I run this, it's going to ask me, it gives me what ones do I want to include? Let's just pretend I want to have it for everything. And just a test and generate HTML. And bam, it throws it, it uses the notify class that I mentioned earlier. I can paste it here and you can see how it um, it wrote the HTML, added the just a test tag to each link. So this way I can very quickly write emails having them linked and I can come in here and I can um, you know break it up and move it around. It's still, it's HTML, right? And then I can come back in here, copy this, paste it into our message master tool, which we wrote also uses auto hotkey, uses the mail gun API for sending emails. But you can see it makes it very easy for me to incorporate the um the discount code because I also don't know each one of these courses has a different download the download ID number that's the different course right and so as Ace and I worked through it to say okay let's map out each of the courses let's write a short description for each of them and then let's build it where I can just ask it um ask when I ask, get asked for the discount code it will blend that in and generate my list for me so saves me a ton of time so anyway um there's another, um, we said 20 days for 40% off. So auto, it was Auto Hockey's 20th anniversary on Friday. And so we said for the next 20 days, which I think goes through the 29th, maybe, um, you can get 40% off on our courses. And all of our courses come with a 200% money back guarantee. So we take all the risk. But uh, you might check that out. Oh, this one wasn't supposed to be here, but um, I can show you that in a minute. Let me get back to my list first, though, because that'll be coming up here soon. The old menu syntax writer, we changed that one. Now that's part of our ultimate spy, but we changed that one slightly because it had a message box and we realized, hey, there's no reason to have a message box, but that's one that's really cool to write your syntax for you. If you had like, like a tool like site or notepad that has the Win32 menus, it will actually write syntax for automating the menus, which is really cool. Um, in Telegram, now I asked Irfan to um, try to automate posting messages to our telegram group to remind people to join for the hero calls. So we're going to have them one hour before in, you know, five to 10, 15 minutes before. So um, he, he first tried to use their bot for doing it. And then he, he got, he used the telegram API to use the bot, but he was thinking we wanted to schedule the posts. And unfortunately the bot doesn't allow that. They have a whole different approach for scheduling things. But he said it was going to be pretty complicated. I'm like, we don't we don't care if it's scheduled. We'll just have it the script running. And an hour before the meeting, it will put, and we have randomly selected the uh, messages, right? So it won't feel so too automatic. But uh, I mean, everyone in the group would know it's it's automated, right? That's our point of what we do. Who cares? Who cares if I got was reminded to attend a meeting because I want the reminders, right? You want to attend those meetings. They're really good. Um, anyway, so we wrote, he, he wrote something that's pretty cool. At some point, maybe we can try to share that if you're interested, let me know. Um, so we he, that's with the, that's the scheduling, the bot. Um, I'm not sure what that one is or that one. 
um, all of this was dealing with the telegram messages. Now, the ultimate spy, now let me launch this. Now, this, next week, I think we'll be getting this out. I did make a change um, here. Oh, well, this tooltip isn't supposed to be there. That's that's still, they left that in, unfortunately, but that's all right. This tool, it's pretty cool. You can drag things to it and discover different tool ways you can automate programs. Um, and then initially this dropdown was on the top. The problem was when I'd go to move this, it was really hard to tell. Let me just go ahead. Let me launch the menu syntax writer. Old menu. Where is it? Oh, this should be alphabetized. Oh, maybe. Um, it'll switch to it now, which is really cool. And then I can drag this. Oh, and look at that. Oh, good. I identified an error. Great. Um, this is why we haven't, one of the reasons why we haven't released it yet. So we started it. Ultimate, let's see, the old menu syntax writer. Switch to it. Let's try it on this tool. So this red up here, this was, um, it was displaying in a message box, which was behind this GUI, it's because this GUI is always on top. And I didn't know it was coming up. And I'm like, there's no reason to have a message box anyway. We'll just notify people right here. And you probably didn't hear it, but there's a sound now also says, hey, there's something wrong. But if I was to use like site, you bring over site and drag to it. Now we see, hey, there's a lot of things I can do with site. I can program and I can, I think, control double click and it would, um, it will, it will, uh, implement that. So find in files. I don't know. Let's see, find, find. So control double click. Yeah. And it triggered the find. Now that's with a post message. So it's a true API call. Um, but if I really wanted the syntax, I can in, I can get it in V1 or V2. I can just copy, um, I think the copy, is it? Nope. So I just double click it and I paste. Now that is the syntax and I could run that and it would go trigger that. So it's really cool for older programs. You can automate them. Um, obviously all that Irfan know about one is they left that tooltip in there, which is annoying. But two is that other error we saw, uh, which, you know, this is why we haven't shared it yet. But this now, see when you're moving, actually, well, what I was gonna show you was, um, when we go to like UIA, this is at the bottom because before up here, it was really hard to tell. I was trying to grab this to move it because it was at the top. Uh, the other thing they're working on was the different styles. The width of this changed depending on what it was attached to. It just looked a little funky. So that's another one we're working on to fix that. Let's color picker. So yeah, it just pops open and this gets put on the bottom of any program. But yeah, you get the idea. So when you close it, it goes back to the main one. And then from there, you can exit out of it. But yeah, that's going to be an amazing tool once we release it. Um, Facebook Geo, again, I mentioned this last week. Uh, we have a project with the client, Ryan, uh, and it's helping do dropping a pin in the Facebook advertising targeting. And Irfan had said he saw something from, I think it was from the guy that does the Lexer or the the extension for vs code um i can't think of his name at the top of my head but um something about doing a not api calls but the um when um i can't think of what it was but he he thought he figured it out so we're really close on that one now i'm um, passing a payload so that oh the web socket that was what i was trying to think of was using a web socket so we're getting close to getting that working um a GUI test. I think that was the one I mentioned earlier. This FFmpeg, that's why I mentioned that last week also, but it um it's pretty cool. You can process videos and it shrinks them down to like a third the file size. Uh, it if you if you use handbrake, you understand the concept, right? Uh, this one, let me go ahead and launch it. It's pretty cool. It um it has a lot of the, well, it has several things you can change, but there's basic default that I never change. I love it. Um, it also deletes the metadata, which is really cool because it's really annoying if you have like a title or a description or something in there that you don't want. This will rip it out when you go through the process. Oh, my version, and this is what we were working on. I I was sitting here and I'm like, well, wait a minute. Could we tell FFmpeg to um, process it through more threads? And um, I asked ChatGPT and ChatGPT said, yes, you just add this parameter. So I manually did that in the DOS prompt. It worked and it definitely made a difference because it, it was when I was set it to one versus like 410, it um it was a lot faster. 
And so I asked Irfan to update the tool. This actually wasn't supposed to be in the main GUI. It was supposed to be under the preferences, which we don't have. But um, while we were working through all that, I said, you know, while even though it's working, the question is, does FFmpeg automatically use more than one thread? And sure enough, on its own, FFmpeg will look at how many cores you have and how many threads available, and it will automatically pick a good number for you. And so I said, you know what? I, simple's better, even though this is kind of handy. I, I like being able to increase this. Um, and we did some math to figure out how many cores on my computer I can have up to 512, apparently, which is you know, a lot of threads. But um, that was what we decided not to add. But anyway, it does a great job. Uh, this H264 and 265, that's the encoding. I, I like to change. I keep it 265 unless I'm giving it to someone who has a older computer is going to have a problem with it because windows doesn't come default with h265 which is really annoying but uh the uh so i can change that if i care to but usually i just tell people oh, if you get in chrome it's fine or use vlc it's fine and i can change some i have some general defaults this i can change the when it gets the extension gets changed or, or the name that gets appended to it i can also change the resolution but i only have like three or four now if you use handbrake you know there's eight million combinations of these things and it's overwhelming and there's also the speed you can choose we, so we there's a lot more options than this uh, as with this uh available but i said no i want to make it minimalist right make it where i don't have 80 things to change because there's just too much overwhelm right it, just because your tools can have all those options doesn't mean they should so this tool is phenomenal. I use it all the time, almost every day. Uh, it, it's great because I save an amazing amount of space. So I love it. Um, and then last week I mentioned I used it for um, the FFmpeg Ripper, where it'll rip out the MP3 files from an, any video, which is really cool. And it's super fast. So that's where we're getting the thread counts. Uh, same thing with there. Update notify. Our media player again and Rafadium. Um, apparently, Irfan was doing something with Rafadium, testing WebSocket. I think we had a question about it. So he was doing a little work with that. And then we get into our project, which I mentioned is so um, Mike, Mike has a similar degree as I do. He's a master's in market research. And that's what I used to do for corporate America for roughly 20 years and doing data science stuff. And I was always a quantitative or quant guy. And I work in SBSS with our tool, Survey Gizmo. So actually, now it's called Alchemer. And extracting your data from Alchemer and your questionnaires and stuff, depending on the level of your account, um, it, it has different abilities. And their tool, uh, Mike's, when I don't blame him, it's like he's paying already 100 and I think 120 a month, somewhere in there. I'll, I forget how much exactly, but it's at least 100 a month that he pays. Um, which is not cheap. Uh, if he wanted to export directly to SPSS, which Survey Gizmo did a really good job, um, if you pay at a higher level at like $200 a month, you can export directly to SPSS. And that file, it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. I, I was honestly really impressed with them. I actually gave them some tips on how to tweak it, which they applied, but it's decent. Uh, but Sir, uh, Mike's account does have API access, but it doesn't have the SPSS access. So all week, Isaias and I spent each day, I'd say like six hours, five to six hours, um, creating a tool to work with the API to write SPSS syntax to have it structured in a certain way. And I got to tell you, man, it's going to save us so much time. It just, boy, it took me longer than I was expecting. And thankfully, Mike's been patient, but we're... um. I've been working on it today of exporting the data and verifying that everything is working properly. So by checking the numbers inside, but it's going to be a lifesaver going forward. It's, it's a huge time saver. So we're, but we're basically using the API, pulling information and what's really cool. So if you understand with um, when you, when we extract the data from survey gizmo directly, it gives us right now, like a CSV file. Well, the certain parts of the variable names and labels and stuff, are in the file, but they're all globbed together. And so think about it like when I first learned web scraping, I was writing a regular expression to grab a table of text and then write a regular expression to parse it. And when Jackie Stuck happened to comment on a post of mine where I was trying to do something, he's like, well, why don't you just loop over the table and grab each one individually? And I'm like, what? And he goes, yeah, yeah, you could do it this way. And so he showed me, that was one of the times when we, we started to talk, that was a long time ago. But, um, 
it's this is the same general concept of like because we're using the API to directly connect to survey gizmo slash alchemer, uh, we can programmatically get the pieces of them separate and we don't have to do any crazy trying pattern matching or something because they're already individually identified for us. And then we're manipulating them, adding the question number, which they don't have, and trunk creating pretty labels and just making it's going to be amazing. I, I know you guys don't watch or don't use SPSS or market research, probably very few of you. So I'm not going to go into the weeds on that, but it's going to be amazing. And, and probably we'll uh, actually do more research work because now I can offer a service to other people and way undercut what other people are charging because it's so simple for me to do. So anyway, that was there. In this, by the way, and I'll I'll try to remember, but if you look up testing, here, let me just throw the URL up on the screen. So this is our tool. Um, so yeah, testing. So it's the automator slash testing. Um, if you go there, you can watch this video where Isaiah walks through how to do testing to set up testing and why it's important. And it's been a lifesaver in this because we keep making tweaks to what we're doing. And, and in this one in particular, because it was really complicated, even for Isaiah, it was not struggling, but we had our, our issues of going around and around because he'd make a change and that change would affect something else. But thankfully, he was building these tests. And so he would he would make a change, hit run, and then have a list displayed in front of him of like, oh, this broke, this broke, these are all good. And I told him, hey, you should um, add an audio format to that to where if a, if it passes, maybe you don't do anything. But if it, if one of those things fails, you should have an audio with a bad sound, right? Maybe a little poop sound um, to say, hey, there's a problem, right? And that way you're not just using a visual so it's, it's, you don't miss it. So anyway, yeah, the testing is really cool. Um, and we're writing these scripts with certain gizmo. Um, and then I wrote just just now because I wanted to have, I'm writing in SBSS, we're using AutoHotKey to write macros in SBSS, but then I need to know which ones are available. And so uh, I watched the old one on my video. And so now let me see, it should still be running. Yeah, so here, if let me come into, this is, these are my notes to Isaiah of like the problems that I've identified. Um, he's He's got today off, lucky him. But um, we've got a bunch of stuff that we need to work on. But let me just put it up here. So if I if I was in SPSS and I wanted to have one of these, I can hit my hotkey because I can't memorize these. And when I click it, it will paste that text in there. So um, I'll try to remember when I'm editing this video or I'll put it in the comments of to go back. If you're interested in how I created this list, it's a super simple script. Uh, let me see. Nope, not that one. Um here we go. So uh, I, because I had the example in V1, I left it in V1. I probably should have written a V2 just to practice, but I need to get work done. Um, you take your text and have your list of items that you want to loop over. And then, you know, you got to call your function, right? But here I'm, I'm passing the text to the, the text menu function, which is right here. Here I loop over and build the menu and then I show it. And then after you click, it deletes it. Uh, and that this is it. It's 51 lines in total. And I could have trimmed out some of that. And, you know, what is that? Like 20 of them are from that text. So, yeah, it's it's a pretty simple way to very quickly say, hey, I need to have a list of things available for me that I can just pull up. And I didn't want to add them to QAP because that would be a pain in the butt. I told Isaiah what we, we should do is because we have this list programmatically without a hotkey from the API calls, we could write this list to export to import easily to prompt assistant under our menu structure. And in prompt assistant, um, we can import, right? So here I could just import, select the thing if it's structured that way and he's the one that built all the stuff so he knows it. And then it would just show up in here. Um, and so I could use QA, uh, sorry, prompt assistant to display. And I think this is it. Um, I got it. Let me see here. Where are my preferences? This is a super simple tool. Hot keys, Windows, right mouse button. Okay. So, um, sorry, I've got too many things going on. So Windows, right mouse button. That's, this is that GUI. So I could just come in here and this would be one of these would be that list that you see, right? And then it would like this. Um, I don't even know what that's going to do. Well, it should have um, displayed something, but I'm not going to worry about it for now. So little shorter video this week on what, what we've done, but um, yeah, some really cool stuff we'll be releasing later this next week and hope you're enjoying it. If you like that and want to see more of these videos, really appreciate it. If you like the video, it really helps us out. Uh, we 
generally we might start publishing videos three times a week because we're getting kind of a backlog of videos. We have a lot of scripts that we need to actually create videos for to share because we got some some great stuff out there. But um, also consider, you know, going to this website. We have our courses on AutoHotKey. It, it can change your life, man. I mean, it, it's changed mine and, and all of ours. We save a ton of time and it's just great to work smarter and harder. Have a great day. Cheers.